So, you may have heard of this game called Psychonauts. It's getting a sequel this year, and it's just been added to Game Pass. And you're probably wondering, should I play a 16-year-old game from the OG Xbox in 2021? And the answer is obviously yes, of course you should. Psychonauts is the quintessential display of Studio Double Fine's imaginative and creative abilities that is still barely rivaled in AAA gaming today. And whether this is your first time or just looking to replay it, look no further than its unabashed whimsiness, cast of weirdo characters, and this beautiful sea monster to prove it. And what name is that noble lake creature? Linda. What a magical lady. And I rest my case. Hold on. I'm not actually done. I haven't even made my point yet. Now, yes, it's very obvious that I have an existing affinity towards this game, but it's also been ages since I've last played it. So when the chance came to try it out once again, not only did I fall in love with it all over, but something else came to mind. Psychonauts is kind of a big deal. And the fact that we're even getting a sequel a decade and a half later is sort of a miracle. Let me paint this picture. It's 2005, an eclectic year for games. God of War, Shadow of the Colossus, Splinter Cell, Resident Evil 4, and the one that I was most excited for. Psychonauts! Which had one thing that those other games did not. This guy, Tim Schafer. Tim wrote and directed my favorite game of all time, Grim Fandango. This is my signed copy of Grim Fandango. To Kurt, from Tim, I'm Kurt. Grim Fandango is a sprawling noir epic set in the afterlife, bursting with crime, deception, and unforgettable writing. And Psychonauts would be Tim's follow-up seven years later, and the debut title of his newly founded studio, Double Fine. Tim and his team who worked on Grimm up to this point had only made adventure games under the umbrella of LucasArts. The adventure genre was heavily focused on story, characters, exploration, and at times, uh, less than logical puzzle solving. Manny, what are you doing? Just marking cards, honey. In its heyday, which was the mid to early 90s, the adventure genre was very popular. But as time went on, the market turned to more action-centric games, and slower-paced narrative-driven ones started to fade out, with Grim Fandango, a masterpiece praised by critics and loved by me, being the nail in the coffin for the genre, because it was a commercial failure for LucasArts, which in turn caused the developer to move away from the genre altogether. So when Tim and his team left LucasArts to start Double Fine, that was a pretty big gamble. A new studio, a new IP, of course there was gonna be setbacks. What followed was years of a treacherous development cycle. At one point, Microsoft was supposed to publish the game, but there was creative differences, then Microsoft dropped the deal. But then Sims maker himself, Will Wright, came in and helped fund it. Eventually, Majesco Entertainment swooped in to publish, and after years and years of development and weeks of crunch, the game came out to be a commercial failure reportedly selling less than 100,000 copies by the end of the year. Still, like Grimm, despite its financial failure, it received critical acclaim for its writing and imaginative design. And this should be no surprise to anyone who has played a Double Fine game, as these are the defining characteristics of the studio's DNA. In Psychonauts, you play as 10-year-old Raz Sputin, who ran away from the circus to attend Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp, a government training facility for psychic secret agents. You will find yourselves on the path to becoming international secret agents. In other words, psychonauts! What ensues is a series of twisting mysteries, from a creature in the lake, to brains being stolen, to Raz having to grapple with his own past. And in order to save the camp and himself, he must enter the minds of a wide array of characters to progress. It is brilliant. In fact, everything about this game conceptually is brilliant. Its title screen, brilliant. Emotional baggage being literal baggage, brilliant. Mental cobwebs, brilliant. Linda, brilliant. And 16 years later, that all stands, but not without some growing pains, however. Starting it up again, yes, it doesn't take long to see its age, like the pre-rendered cutscenes or certain textures that didn't translate well in our HD world. But if you squint your eyes a certain way, you can look right past its liver spots. 
But once my eyes got adjusted, its imperfections very quickly took a back seat as I, once again, became fully, almost distractingly engrossed by the characters that inhabit Whispering Rock's psychic summer camp. I would never do that. I could never kill everyone. Oh, hi, Raz. Squirrel trouble? There isn't a single moment where I felt my time was wasted for exploring, or I wasn't rewarded for going off the beaten path to see what was behind a cabin, or hear conversations among campers, often revealing bizarre subplots that only linger in passing, like Elka's undying love to her ex Nils, when in actuality, Nils' only concern is spying on girls. You know that cabin is empty, right? Duh, I'm practicing for tonight, when it's gonna be full of lady. Meanwhile, this dude is forever on the hunt for a bear, while this cheer squad is seemingly up to something really, really menacing. Every character has a purpose in place that makes the camp feel lived in. Each of its characters, world, concepts, and mechanics work in complete tandem. Whether it's Raz's past as a circus performer to explain his gymnastic abilities, to not being able to swim due to fear instilled by a supposed curse bestowed upon his family by gypsies, or just the very concept that levels are constructed and designed on the specific character's psyche, which is why Sasha Nine's mind is a perfectly organized white cube, or that Coach Oleanders is a battlefield-stricken landscape. It all makes sense and works within the logic of Psychonaut's world. But that isn't to say that it isn't held back in some other places, most specifically its stiff arthritis joints. For a platformer, controls aren't the greatest. They aren't horrible, in fact at times they're perfectly passable, but adapting to the game's slightly sticky platforming controls was the biggest hurdle when returning to this game, especially some of its combat. And nothing is more defining of this game's characteristics, both good and bad, than its most iconic level, the Milkman Conspiracy. Later in the game, in order to bypass a gate into an abandoned asylum, you have to enter the mind of one of its patients, Boyd, who is a conspiracy theorist fixated on a milkman. It's all about the milkman. Can't you see? Is this like one of those 3D paintings? I can never do those. This level, from top to bottom, is a feast of the game's artistic originality, creative design, and comical writing. In this level, you'll walk through the fragmented and disjointed mind of Boyd while disguising yourself and blending in with the spies that inhabit it, scouring for the milkman. There's Girl Scouts who whisper to bushes, and eyes are watching your every move. It truly instills an incredible, eerie feeling of being watched. But it is also obstructed by some combat encounters that the player is forced into, which do more to break the pacing and immersion than it does to engross me further. But despite these shortcomings, Psychonauts levels rarely repeat themselves, with each one introducing a bespoke mechanic and style that only exists within it. From the role-switching kaiju level to the luchador level, not to mention the abilities you gain with progression, it constantly kept things engaging every step of the way, even though the steps themselves can be a little wonky. Overall, no singular mechanic is perfect, but the world you interact with, traverse, and stay in during your visit to the Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp is flawless. Psychonauts was built on a series of very big creative risks, whether that be disbanding from an established institute like LucasArts, starting a new studio, staking to creative integrity against seemingly all odds, only for the game to initially come out as a commercial flop. And yet, here we are, 16 years later, with a sequel on the way, due in part to a lofty fundraising campaign. So for me, beyond just being hugely influential on me as a tween and actually holding up pretty well today, I also kind of see it as a symbol for artistic and creative integrity in the games industry. So for all of these reasons, this is why Psychonauts is a pretty big deal and worth your attention 16 years later. And besides, it's on Game Pass, so like, if you have an Xbox and you have Game Pass, if you have PC and Game Pass, you don't really have an excuse to, like, to not try it. And while you're at it, just download Grim Fandango for me, please. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I'm Curtin Davina. This is Megatron. Happy gaming. See you later.